Okay, friends, here we go. Last chapter of Double Fudge, chapter 16. It's called You Never Know. After Halloween, the weather turned cold. The natural beauties had never experienced winter. Whenever I saw them, they were shivering. So was Minnie. Since they'd be on their way to Florida soon, Cousin Howie said it didn't make sense to buy winter clothes. I kept thinking if they were that cold, they'd leave New York and head south before their six weeks were up. But the natural beauties were determined to stay in New York until the last possible moment. Mom and Mrs. Tubman put together a box for them, sweaters and jackets for the kids, and winter maternity clothes for Eudora. She was growing now. You could definitely tell she was pregnant. Fudge loved putting his hands on her belly. There's really a baby inside? Yes, Eudora said. Just like a panda. Not quite like a panda, Eudora said. Panda babies are only as big as a stick of butter when they're born. My baby will be at least six or seven pounds. You remember Tootsie when she was born, don't you? I didn't like her, Fudge said. But you like her now, Eudora said. Yeah, not as much as I'd like a panda. Panda, Tootsie said. That's right, Eudora said. You're getting to be quite a talker. And she wasn't the only one. I can talk too, Minnie announced to the natural beauties. We know you can, Flora said, but you don't have to, Fauna said, because you have us, Flora said. No, Minnie shouted. What do you mean, Fauna asked him. I think he means, Flora began. Stop, Minnie said. Stop, Fauna asked. I can talk myself. Is he saying he doesn't want us to talk for him anymore, Flora asked. Is that what you're saying, Minnie, Fauna asked. Yes. I guess he's growing up, Flora said. I guess he's not our baby brother anymore, Fauna agreed, sounding sad. Cheer up, Fudge told them. Soon you'll have another baby in the family. It might even be a panda baby. A panda baby? The natural beauties laughed. You never know, Fudge told them. Mrs. Little had a mouse. She named him Stuart. Fudge has his first loose tooth, bottom front. He's planning on collecting big time from the tooth fairy. He's been wiggling his loose tooth for weeks. He was still wiggling it at our farewell dinner with the Howies. Mom invited Olivia Osterman too, so the three heroes could have a reunion. But Minnie was more interested in Uncle Feather than a reunion. He took off for Fudge's room right away. I was glad to see Cousin Howie follow him. Once the natural beauties found out Olivia Osterman had been a Broadway star, they wanted to hear everything about her life on stage. New York is a magical place, she told them. It's a city where your dreams can come true, where a girl can become a star overnight. That was enough for the natural beauties. Please, 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 they begged Eudora. Can we please stay in New York? You and Daddy can go south and we'll come down to visit. That's out of the question, Eudora told them. You belong with your family. The natural beauties looked at Mom. Oh, no, I thought. Please, Cousin Anne, Fauna begged. We wouldn't be any trouble, Flora said. No, 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 Eudora said. That's not what I meant. But the natural beauties had their own ideas. We'd help out with Tootsie, Fauna said. What about me, Fudge asked. Don't you want to help out with me? Sure, Flora said, with you too. Girls, Eudora told the natural beauties, that's enough. Enough of what, Howie asked, returning with Minnie. Never mind, Eudora said. Mom thanked the natural beauties for their kind offer. Wasn't that a kind offer, Warren? Dad nodded, but he looked worried until Mom said, Unfortunately, girls, this isn't the right time for us to take on any more responsibilities. Well, of course it isn't, Eudora said. Besides, Dad said, winter is long and hard and you're not used to it. But we'd love to see snow, the natural beauty said at the same time. What are we talking about here, Cousin Howie asked. About college, Dad said, thinking fast. Maybe when Flora and Fauna are older, they can come to New York to study. And live in a dorm, I added. Yes, Mom said they wouldn't want to miss out on dorm life. I bowed my head and silently gave thanks that Mom and Dad are smarter than I thought. Dorm life, Cousin Howie said. I don't know about that. I've read they have co-ed dorms these days. Well, we don't have to worry about that yet, do we? Eudora said. A minute later, Mom announced that dinner was ready and we took our seats at the table. Let's all join hands and give thanks, Cousin Howie said. I wasn't about to tell him that I already had. We went around the table taking turns. Cousin Howie gave thanks for finding his long lost family. Mrs. Osterman gave thanks for an interesting life. The natural beauties gave thanks for New York. Minnie gave thanks for egg duff, then leaned over and licked Fudge's arm. Fudge inched away and pulled down his sleeves. Then it was Fudge's turn. I give thanks for money, he said. Dad sighed. 
Can you think of anything else, Fudge? Toys, Fudge said. I'll bet there are other things you're thankful for, Dad said. Oh, those things, Fudge said, and he started listing all of them. I give thanks that Uncle Feather can talk again and that his wing is better and that I'm smart and Mom and Dad love me best. He looked right at me. Ha ha, Pete. Ha ha, I said, but he still wasn't finished. And I give thanks for Monster Spray and for my teacher, William, and Grandma and Buzzy and Richie Potter and... And, and he went on and on, but I tuned him out and thought about all the things I'm thankful for. Not that I'd say any of them out loud in front of the Howies or anyone else. Not everything has to be announced to the world. Some things are private. I guess Fudge hasn't learned that yet because he was still going strong, giving thanks for his favorite books, his favorite foods, even his favorite smells. Finally, Dad said, thank you, Fudge. I think we can eat now. While we were eating, Cousin Howie waved his fork around and explained to Mrs. Osterman that they'd be heading for the Florida Everglades in a few days. Everblades, Fudge perked up. I told him a million times it's glades, not blades, but he still doesn't get it. He has the idea that the Howies are going to a place where nobody walks, bikes, or drives. They just blade. Is that near Disney World, he asked, because I really want to go to Disney World. I'm thinking of buying it. Cousin Howie laid down his fork and wiped his mouth with his napkin. Tubby, you've got to bring your family down to visit. You've got to let me show them the real Florida, the one nature created, not Mr. Disney. We'll do a canoe trip through the Everglades. They'll see alligators and crocodiles. Cousin Howie turned to Fudge. Did you know, little fella, it's the only place in the world where alligators and crocodiles live together? And all kinds of birds, Fauna added. We have birds in New York, Fudge said. We have pigeons. No offense, Fudge, but we're not talking about pigeons, Cousin Howie said. We're talking about flamingos and herons and spoonbills. Cousin Howie turned to Dad. So, what do you say, Tub? How does Christmas in the Everglades sound? <laughs>